Hey Flock, I'm Mike from Epic Duck Studios and welcome to the Howling Griffins Paint by Numbers Part 8. This is the finale for this Paint by Numbers series and in it I'm going to be adding some deeper lines to basically the whole model and just going around fixing up some blemishes. There's some areas where, for example, I got some lead belcher up on his collar and just little things like that. I'm going to fix them up and then just really bring in some deeper shadows and that's really going to finish this piece up. So first I'm going to put a little bit of red and yellow on the palette just to go around and make my fixes. So I'm going to start with just a little bit of a fist in red, a little bit of Wild Rider red to highlight that if necessary, a little bit of Averland Sunset, and a little bit of Uriel yellow as well. So I'm going to start with just a little bit of the fist in red on my brush fix right here because it's a definite known problem. And I can see I made a little mistake here on the shoulder pad as well. Now that's right almost in the crease where I'm going to be applying the Agrax Earthshade shortly, so I'm not worried about trying to highlight that back up. Now here I've got just a little bit of wear because my fingers end up resting against that edge. I'm just going to quickly throw a little paint on it as well. I'm just giving the model once over. I can see a small blemish on this wrist. Actually, that might be it for the red side. Let's just check the backpack as well. I can see some on the yellow side, but the red side actually looks fine. So I'm going to switch over to a little bit of Averland Sunset. And again, I'm just looking for areas where, especially the metallic paints, have accidentally gotten onto areas that should be yellow. And here I actually got a little bit of the Gnome Oil on the collar, so I'm just touching that up. Same here, just a little bit more Gnome Oil. Back of the wrist looks good, shoulder pad looks good, I think we're good on the leg. And here you can see also a little more black than really should be present. And you can see here a little bit of the lead belcher just made it up onto the backpack where it shouldn't have been. So one of the most important touch-ups I want to do here is reshaping the right eye because that blue kind of came in a little bit too heavy-handed and reframed the lid a little bit. So I want to try and fix that. And if you look at it from this angle, you can also see the same thing sort of happen to the top of the eyelid. There we go. So they're roughly the same now. Looking a little bit better. Eyes are a little more square. Okay, so now we can just go ahead and start applying selectively Agrax Earthshade to the whole model. So this is being used now to add some deeper shadows to the model. I don't want to just blob it onto the whole model like you might be used to doing. You know, I'm making sure I have very, very little bit on the brush. I'm going to work it into the corner, so I'm just kind of bringing it along. Just letting the tip of the brush kind of ride along the crease and just letting a little bit of the paint deposit as I go by. You know, it's very, very thin lines. Just like so. Now, some areas you can use it a little more liberally, like around the backpack here. Just kind of blob it on a little bit more because it should also be darker here, but it's also going to be covered up. Same thing with you know the lower back here. It's kind of an inaccessible area and it should be darker. So 
So now I'm bringing just a little bit of this sort of along the panel lines on the red armor. And again, I'm just working to strengthen shadows. So up here underneath the boot, I added quite a bit of it. Do the same for the side of the boot. Really kind of this area, I am gonna sort of flood with it. If the boots end up looking too dark, they're just dirty and that's okay. So kind of, you can be more loose bit towards the bottom of the model, I guess, and sort of focus it more and more as you go up. Now here you can see there's three little horizontal lines. I'm being a little more liberal here as well, just to help fill them in. Because they clearly were meant to be detailed, but were never painted like one. And here's a little mistake I made. I actually forgot to get some Nuln Oil on here, so I'm going to just be a little more generous with the Agrax than I need to be, so that it does fill those little bits of the accordion joint that were missed. belt. I want to just center, circle that center detail, and kind of come across the top of it. Now here we're over the yellow. I want to start being a little more careful again because it's much more pronounced over the yellow. So you can see I'm just lightly tracing around this sort of thigh armor pad very very lightly following the panel lines letting them brush sort of let the wash leach into the lines instead of actually depositing it Around the hand I'm being a little more liberal again because this is a pretty detailed saturated area. So I want to make sure it works its way into all the creases. And the only way to really hit all of them is to just kind of slap it across them. The same with the back of the hand. I'm going to be a little more liberal on the fingers and the hand itself. And then start to play nicer as I get into the shoulder. Now the helmet's a little tricky because we don't want to like blow away the eye or anything. So I'm just going to really lightly kind of come around the crest. Across the front. And then on the other side again just up to the crest and sort of over the earpiece. So I'm being really careful not to even hit the eye there. On this side, so same thing, I want to bring this in around rim of the shoulder pad, just painting that nice distinct line between the arm and the shoulder. Alright, and there the shadows are much deepened. And I'm just going to repeat the same process on the backpack. So here I'm kind of circling around this because I want to make sure I work it into this circular groove all the way around. Double up on the washes you've already done if you want to. You just 
want to push those shadows a little further. Otherwise, you can focus on just the panel lines that need to be done. Last thing I want to do is just touch up this purity seal. So I'm going to bring in a little bit of Wild Rider Red and just add some quick highlights to the seal itself. I've still got a little bit of white on my palette, so I'm going to bring that in and mix it with the Wild Rider Red. a little bit on the bland side, so I'm going to just get some colors down for that as well. You're going to be using some Citadel Xandri Dust and some Citadel Flayed One Flesh. So right now I'm just coming in with that Xandri Dust. Now you can see this inner the second uh sort of piece of paper to the purity seal is a little bit harder to hit. Now with a little bit of played one flesh, I'm just going to sort of bring this to the topmost area here. Just like that. I'm not going too crazy with it. You can see here the Nuln Oil did blot up some of the yellow areas. So I'm going to come in with just a little bit of Averland Sunset and just kind of blur those edges a little bit. So now I'm ready to glue the backpack on. Now even though this is a plastic model, because I'm effectively gluing paint onto paint instead of plastic onto plastic, I want to make sure I use super glue for this. So before I do that, I do want to just trial fit it and make sure they fit together okay. The reason for that is that when I had put the pin in here, it's possible a little burr or a little bit of glue that held it in place might have got into the hole where the backpack meets up and just made it not fit properly. So I'm applying here is just a little bit of Gorilla Super Glue. Alright Flock, there's the finished Howling Griffin Sergeant, and he'll be taking the table pretty soon in Warhammer 40k Kill Team. Hey, I hope you enjoyed this video. There's plenty more here on YouTube. You can also join me twice a week at twitch.tv slash epicduckstudios on Thursday and Sunday evenings at 8pm Eastern, where I do stream my painting live. If you want to support the show, you can do that at patreon.com slash epicduck. Even giving as little as a dollar a month helps keep the lights on and the paint flowing. You can also help by hitting subscribe here on YouTube or sharing this video with some friends. Thanks a lot!